Okay, earth science time. I forgot to grab the thing that I'm going to look at. Stand by. I've grabbed it. Don't drop your $1,900 laptop if you can help it. I hope the video caught that, me almost dropping this laptop that Mr. Meyer very graciously bought me because he's a nice guy. Okay. Um, we are talking about systems, one of Kyla's favorite subjects, systems and modeling Earth's systems. The spheres of Earth. We're going to just, let's call it systems of Earth. I took a class in college which I really, really liked called Earth System History. What was it about, do you reckon? Probably the history of Earth systems. Yeah, yeah, no, not systems. The Earth as a and what is a system? Define it, redefine it, because we've already talked about this before, but redefine that real quick. Components interacting as part of an enclosed whole. The whole here is the system. What's enclosed mean? Does it mean it literally has to be like wood box all around it? No, it means it has boundaries. It, it's enclosed by boundaries. And the boundaries can be philosophical. Like, you know, the boundary between the biosphere and the hydrosphere isn't a physical thing. It's not like, here's a can of tuna. That's a pretty good example, though, and it is funny, because there's tuna and water, and there, oh, shut up. Um, the, it doesn't have to be like, here's a plastic tub around the biosphere, separating it from the hydrosphere. The difference is by definition. The biosphere is things that are alive, and the hydrosphere is water. Components interacting as part of an enclosed whole, and enclosed mean it has boundaries. The boundaries can be definitional. They usually are definitional meaning that we define what the boundaries are. Let's talk about the spheres. So these are some systems of Earth, and we call them the spheres. And these are large-scale systems. Are there smaller-scale systems? Certainly. Systems go all the way down. What are the spheres? These are the large-scale systems. OK, I think the, your text calls it the geosphere. So let's use that same terminology. And specifically, lithosphere means a very um, it means a very discrete part of Earth, the part of it that's made of solid rock, where the geosphere means all uh, rock matter, all inorganic matter that makes up the solid part of Earth. So we have the geosphere. Let's not number them. This is a useless thing to number. Let's just list them. Geosphere. Hydrosphere. Biosphere, atmosphere. Could we make up others? Yeah, we could say. Yeah, we could say the lithosphere is one. It isn't. I mean, it's not one of the ones we normally think about. We could say the. Um, we could just probably put any adjective on them. We could call it the necrosphere, and it would be all the dead things on planet Earth. That'd be sick. Let's put that one up here. This one's pretend. Um, but we can use this formula to mean any of them. The necrosphere is all the dead things on planet Earth. That's spooky. Okay, what is the geosphere? It's the kind of rock. Yeah, as I said, it's the inorganic matter, the inorganic solid matter that makes up planet Earth. Rocks, ground, things like the mantle and the core count as part of the geosphere. Mountains, a rock, another rock, two rocks squished together. All that stuff is part of the geosphere. What's the hydrosphere? Water. All the water. Is there, a, is there a physical boundary between the geosphere and the hydrosphere? Probably at some places, but can you imagine a rock in some water? I bet you can imagine a rock in some water. You don't have to have a very strong imagination to imagine that. But do you see, the definition here is what the boundary is. Where is the line between the rock and the water? Well, you could make the case that there's a literal line around the rock, and that's the delineation. But, but really, it's a definition. The rock is part of the geosphere. The water is part of the hydrosphere. Okay, what's the biosphere? Well, there's a fish in here too. Is it? Is there a physical boundary between the fish and the hydrosphere? Yeah, but it's on a, especially on an atomic scale, it's pretty, it's pretty uh, permeable. The water is always going into the fish, and water is always coming out of the fish. So it's not really a good physical boundary. Do you see what I'm getting? I keep coming back to these boundaries because I'm trying to show you that the boundaries are those of definitions. We define this fish as part of the biosphere.
What about the atmosphere? Is there atmosphere in my little diagram here? Yeah, the gas. All the gas that is on planet Earth is the atmosphere. The biosphere is this fish, the hydrosphere is the water, and the geosphere is the... Are all of these systems, are all of them themselves systems? Yeah. yeah, yep, are they all part of one system? Yeah, they're all part of the Earth system. Do they have separate things that make them up? Do the components of these systems, are they also systems? Yep. For instance, is this fish a system? Does the fish have a, fish have a digestive system? Does even the stomach of a fish have systems within it, systems of cells and tissues? Yeah, it's just systems all the way down. Are the atoms that make up the DNA, which is itself a system, are those systems? Yeah, those are systems. Within the atom, is the nucleus a system? Yeah, systems are components of matter and energy, of matter and energy. Guess what is everything in the universe? Matter and energy. There are also things, some things we can't touch and feel, like, um, happiness and ideas and ghosts and the Holy Ghost, those are things that are not considered components of systems. They, they may or may not be real, but they're not part of science and so they're not matter and energy and so they, we don't consider them part of these systems. Scientists may define, as it says, the geosphere, atmosphere, hydrosphere, and biosphere slightly differently depending on the purpose of their study. For example, in the for example, the frozen portion of the hydrosphere, including glaciers, ice sheets, and loose snow, is sometimes separated as the cryosphere. They're just using Greek roots shoved onto sphere to say this is a system of all this stuff on Earth. What about the anthroposphere? What's that probably mean? You should have read. Yeah, which is so study of humans, yeah, all, all the humans that make up planet Earth is the anthroposphere. So you can define these spheres in different ways. You can delineate, you can put boundaries around the systems in different ways to suit your needs for whatever research or whatever it is that you're doing. The yellow explain box at the bottom of Exploration 1 was your bell work, and the question was this. I'm going to pose it to you, and then we're going to talk about it. Briefly compare Earth's four main systems, and then it got away from me. Summarize how they are related to each other physically, and in terms of matter and energy, what they're composed of. What is the relationship between these things physically? Give me just an example as way of definition. That isn't my example. Yep, that's exactly right. Yep, then there, there's no way that Mike picked that up, but basically it is that the, in Kyla's example, there is a person, a member of the biosphere and the anthroposphere, if you would say such a thing, standing on the geosphere, drinking of the hydrosphere. They have a straw here because I drew them kind of wonky. And they're also at the same time breathing in of the atmosphere. Look at all the breathing in they're doing. You can see it usually. It just look, the air looks like a giant mustache coming inside of you. Um, and look, they're happy about it too. And these are their nose holes are over. They're messed up. It's Peppa Pig. Um, remind me after we're done with the discussion, I'm going to show you a hilarious Peppa Pig video. Questions about the spheres and systems of Earth? What are some ways, this is a, in my opinion, kind of a, a rough sh change of gears that you're explorations do here, but uh, it switches immediately to visualizing data. What are the ways that we visualize data? We talked about one just now when I was talking about the lab guide. In fact, we talked about several. Do you guys, let's, shall we, would it be convenient or um, would it be helpful if we defined data real quick? Sure. sure. So as I'm erasing this, let's think of a little definition for data. Okay. Okay. So we can say information gathered. Someone else, let's add on to that definition. Some, another person. What kind of data could there be? Sure. 
examples, or I was, I was going for broad categories, but what are some examples? Let's think about the no, okay, yeah. Uh, quantitative data, quantitative data, and qualitative data. Define these. Numbers, yep, numbers and measurements. What about qualitative? Yeah, it's not quite that. Uh, I can see why you think that, because quality to us means something is good or bad. Like I say, th these are some poor quality bananas. But qualitative in science, this, r this really means more like uh, just non-numerical data. The qualities of an item, meaning its properties, its non-numerical properties. The color of something, the smell of something, things that you can't measure. You don't usually measure them with numbers. Both of those things you probably could measure with numbers, but um, anything you're not measuring with numbers, even when it's something like big or small, like if you just say the big beaker and the small beaker, instead of the 1,000 milliliter and the 400 milliliter beaker, that's qualitative. If you say big and small, that's qualities. So thing, even things that could be described with numbers are qualitative if you're not using numbers to describe them. Okay, how do we visualize this stuff then? Like, like what, what I mean by that is, if we just gather data, like we did for the Know Your Well program, can you think about Know Your Well program? We just had a, sp well, even this is a way of visualizing it, but we just had a spreadsheet like this, and it had the nitrate content, the ammonium content, uh, what else was in there, cadmium content, zinc content, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. For a certain well, well X, we would put in the quantitative data for these things. So even this is visualizing it. What did we call this? I called it a spreadsheet, but what do we call this usually in science? Yeah, a table, or a chart even. What would be a more, a better way to visualize, or maybe not even, I shouldn't say better, what would be a more, what would be a more concise and even simpler way to visualize this that we would, that we could very commonly get right from the data on a table? Let's say we also have well Y and well Z here. What would be a good way to visualize these things together as they relate to one another? Yes, but that's not really, I mean, it, that is visualizing, like you're seeing it, but, but what's a common way to visualize data, like I'm gonna switch colors here. Sorry, I'm erasing these ones so I can switch to a different color. What would be a very common way to visualize these things, to make it so that a person could just look at a single image usually and have these data in their brain? I'm thinking of a graph where we could graph X, Y, and Z and the relative amounts of those different quantities there. So maybe X has a certain quantity of, oh, X is not blue, X has a certain quantity of these things and we can kind of, you know what I mean, this is gonna be maybe the world's worst graph because I didn't actually think it through very well. I shouldn't have put these things on the axes, but we could visualize the data in that way. Don't take this graph as an example, this is not a good example of a graph, but a graph is one way to visualize data. How do we visualize geospatial data, that is, data that relates to the geography and space of an area. What's the best way to visualize that usually? A map. A map. And that gets us into the next thing, which is viewing Earth from above. I took a college class on this not even very long ago, less than a year ago, um, called Geographic Information Systems, and it was about building maps. So we take information from the land around us and build maps. This this little example here, I'll show the camera. Hello camera, this is in case you forgot your book or whatever. Look here, this is a map. And the map it says has data on it from the geosphere, the hydrosphere, and the biosphere. What, what um, I'm gonna show you guys now. What parts of this map are probably showing the geosphere? The yeah, the gray and brown areas are probably showing what the kind of bedrock is. What about what is showing the hydrosphere? The blue, the water, the rivers and the lakes. And then the biosphere is probably being shown here by the green, which is probably showing different densities of vegetation. There are certainly better and more interesting ways to relay all this, but depending on what you want, uh, any kind of combination of mapping data can be used. It goes on to talk about topographic maps, which you should definitely read about and would be a great lab for you to do. And it talks about um, 
like temperature maps. You can really have a map show a lot of different data. And if the, if, especially in geology, maps usually have to do with a certain area of planet Earth. And if your data, are, maps always do. If your data has to do with a certain area of planet Earth, a map is usually an excellent way of displaying that. Can you think of a way we could map the Know Your Well data? Not, I'm not asking you to do that, but could you think of a way to map that data? Yeah, because we got all those different samples from different wells, right? We could even focus on one of these, maybe the ammonium, map what it is at every single location. Here's where we did it, Nebraska. Hold on, just let me finish this real quick, okay? Um, if we mapped how much the ammonium was, like maybe we had a big dot for a lot of ammonium and a baby dot for a very little ammonium, and we mapped all where all the different wells we did, we could probably see a trend that the ammonium decreased this way, for instance, it may be, and probably didn't. But do you see what I'm getting at? Like if we use uh, data that we collected over a large area and put it in a map, that can show us a lot of in interesting information. That's a way to visualize data. Question, Kyla. Uh, yeah. That, that is something, even as you're saying that, that I, that with what I learned in my college class, we could all do like next week if we have that data. And it's really extremely easy to do once you get the hang of it. That is, it's a super powerful way to look at data is to see how the, it changes over an area. So yeah, we can definitely do some of that. Do you have other questions about visualizing data or system models? What, Camden? Do you have other questions? Surely you have some questions. That was really fast. What could, what could you do? What could you do if this was too fast and you didn't get all this information down? Like maybe someone who didn't write everything down. Yeah, you could either of those. Read the explorations again and take notes, or watch the video that we just made and take notes. Bye. Epic. I think this microphone needs to be charged.